time, I guess. Well, hello, Kate. How are you, neighbor? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Doing well. How are you, neighbor? It's good to see you today. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, I have a question for you neighbors. Do you ever suffer? Yes. What about a happy? Are you ever happy? Yes. Yes. Have you ever been sick? Yeah, different times. Or do you know anyone who's been sick? Today we're going to be talking about those things. It's going to be interesting because the author of James goes in and, well, he says when you're sick, when you're happy, when you're suffering, there's something there's something you ought to do. Can you guess what it is? Yes. Pray. Pray. <laughs> Good guess. Good guess. You're right. So let's let's take a look at, at James uh, chapter five verses thirteen through twenty today, and let's figure out how in this neighborhood of ours can we apply this to our own lives. So Kate, would you like to start us off today? It's going to sound very familiar. Start with verse thirteen. Is anyone among you in trouble? Oh. Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Mm, I tell you what, before we go any further, let's talk about this. If anyone is in trouble, if anyone is suffering or struggling, why should we pray? What do you think, Kate? To talk to God. Mm, to talk to God. Absolutely. And maybe express our concerns and our... Uh, the things that are worrying us and mm -hmm. that are stress or, mm -hmm. or pain. Yeah, we can pray that God would take that pain, take our suffering, take the things that are troubling us, and you know, you ever heard of something called the cross? Yeah. Part of part of what the cross is about, part of what our prayers about suffering are about is praying that God brings that transformation that happened on the cross, taking something that's terrible, that's awful, that's horrible, and actually changing it, transforming it, so that it can actually be something that's healing, and good um, and life giving instead of death giving and renewal exactly renewal resurrection, resurrection even wow okay so i've got i've got the suffering bit now what about singing songs and hymns of praise to god cuz i'll be honest that kind of sounds like bragging to me is that is that why we is that why we should, when we're happy, when we're when we're joyful, uh, thankful? Is that why we is that why we pray? Because we're we're bragging? No, it's to rejoice and thank God for the gifts He's given us. Oh, say thank you, God, that I'm. Well, this might be a callback to last week. That I'm the richest there is. That I have all the things. Thank you, God. Boy, I am so thankful to God that I have all these things. Well, it doesn't stop there, does no. it? We can do that. We can say, wow, God, you've really blessed me. But then our thankful hymns and songs turn into a trans... It, our, there's another transformation that mm -hmm. happens where... Why are we... Do, are we given gifts just to hold on to them for ourselves? No, we're not. We're no. called to share them mm -hmm. and to glorify God in that mm -hmm. and to serve others. Yeah. And then those songs of praise actually grow, so it's mm -hmm. not just us singing them. We actually sing them together. That's mm -hmm. We have literally in church every Sunday a hymn of praise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, because God has done wonderful things. Mm -hmm. Now, now we get to the sick part. Is anyone among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Does that happen? It does. It does? 
You know, we do use anointing oils. So, I mean, it frequently and frequently. Mm -hmm. um, but that's actually a big part of what our pastor does. That's mm -hmm. part. Of, that's a big part of what our pastor does. Where going and visiting the sick, and that's not something only pastors are called to do. No, it's something that we're all called to do. To be to accompany one another and to pray for one another, um, because the family, the body of Christ, the family of Christ, the family of Christ neighborhood. It's not just one person living in that neighborhood. No, it isn't. It wouldn't be a neighborhood if there was only one person. Yeah, you can't have a neighbor of one just <laughs> if it's just you. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're actually called to pray for and anoint one another, bless one another. Mm -hmm. um, and let's keep going yeah. because because it doesn't just stop with that, that, that prayer, does it? No, it doesn't. Uh, the prayer isn't just like a nice thing. Oh. The writer says in, uh, whoops, my book flips the pages. Chapter, or chapter, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's keep going there, Kate. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Mm. You want me to keep going? Or? Well, let's take a look at that first for a second. Because this prayer, we're not just talking about physical sickness anymore, are we? No, we're not. No. Uh, what is? What are? What else are we talking about? A spiritual sickness. Mm -hmm. Something we like to call, starts with an S, ends with an N, and has an I in the middle. Sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah and inward focused mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we would actually pray about sin hmm. about that, that 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 we would be able to be healed and forgiven mm -hmm. uh, we know that that healing and forgiveness does come and that's part of why we pray about it and actually ask others to pray about it too mm -hmm. huh. you know I like I like the example that James gives next mm -hmm. uh, about Elijah and the power of prayer. Would you read? Would you keep yeah. reading at seventeen? Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Mm. So, this praying, it's not just about feeling good. No, it isn't. Um, it's not just about, oh, pray and, and we feel better. Prayer actually has real power. Mm -hmm. um, there is real healing and real transformation and real forgiveness and real rejoicing mm -hmm. that comes through prayer. And something we don't think about very often, I think. Yeah. Or... Maybe we're overlook. tempted. We're tempted to overlook it. That's a good way of putting it. We're tempted to overlook the power that prayer has. Now, that prayer, that power that prayer has. Does that mean, well, we we go, we stay at home, and we we we've got a broken bone, and we pray, God, God heal, God heal this broken bone, and have people come and pray, God heal this broken bone, and we don't and we don't touch it. We don't we don't do anything to it. Is that what this is about? No, no, not not quite. No, we can actually we actually can look we can look and see the wonderful the ways that God answers the prayers for healing through through doctors and through medicine and through the ways that that we that God has given us the ability to discover how these amazing things work our bodies mm -hmm. and antibodies and and uh, what are the, the 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 cells that that knit our, our, us back together and. Mm -hmm. And even, and even to the point where we can go and say, hey, we can even prevent sickness now. We know, we know how vaccines can be created and we can, we actually, I think we can even say that part of that, our prayer is a prayer that we would be able to use the resource that, that we have responsibly. Yeah. Um, and listen to those people that God has gifted. Mm -hmm. Because then, then that transformation continues to happen. Um, and that healing continues to happen, and well, we're not focused on ourselves anymore. We're actually focused on 
others. Mm -hmm. And God, mm -hmm. what God has given to us. So, we continue to hear a little bit about how sin comes into the mix here. Mm -hmm. Would you finish it, finish it off, Kate? Yeah. And would you read it from the message? Because yeah. I liked the way I liked the way that, that it was worded here. My dear friend, if you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, don't write them off. God, go after them, get them back, and you will you will have rescued precious lives from destruction and pre prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. Mm. Yeah. When we, like, it's that responsibility thing again, isn't it, Kate? It is. There's a temptation when we see sin happening to say, oh, I'll just mind my own business. But we're actually called to pray, pray about that sin, but also to reach out to those, the people mm -hmm. who around us are sinning, even as we ourselves sin and need mm -hmm. people to reach out and lift us up. Mm -hmm. And isn't that part of what that neighborhood is about? Mm -hmm. It's about helping one another. Um, and in that reaching out, there's different ways and in different times and places that mm -hmm. that can happen. But what is it? What is that setting out to do? We're setting out to save mm -hmm. save life, um, whether that be literal. Hey, we're saving we're saving people's life because if you're going to go out and sin and punch somebody in the face, that's that's not very life giving. Yeah, um, but also about bringing about the transformation. Mm -hmm the new life mm -hmm. the renewal mm -hmm. and resurrection mm -hmm. that comes through jesus so neighbor we've gotten to the end of james mm -hmm. and it's a challenging book there's a reason there's a reason that that people have struggled with this for so long but i think there's a gift in that too that we would be able to be challenged um that we would be able to Pray. pray. So maybe maybe we should take a hint from James. And shall we end in prayer? I think that'd be wonderful. So I'm, we're going to invite you to name some things out loud or in your heart uh, or in the comments if you, if you feel so called. Um, so let's pray together. Mm -hmm. Gracious God, we know that this world of ours is full of pain and suffering and troubles. So in this time, we lift up out loud or in our hearts those things for which we are troubled about and suffering from. God, we also know there is so much joy. There are so many gifts that you have given us, so many talents and abilities and wonderful people who bring joy into our lives so in this time we lift up those things which bring us joy all for the praise of you and finally God we know that there is sickness there is sin, there is brokenness, and we encounter it daily in ourselves and in those around us. So in this time, God, we lift up prayers for healing. all of these things and more we bring to you trusting in your goodness your grace your forgiveness and transforming power in this neighborhood and all over the world in jesus name amen amen so neighbor know that you are loved and held and we pray for you daily and we'll see you later neighbor see you later neighbor